you probably noticed by now that within each of these categories, I have a few tidbits about <laughs> the mistakes. So it's kind of like there's sub mistakes. So with when it comes to editing, there's a few things that I see. And one is either people not editing at all, which is problematic because you need to edit your photos to adjust the tones and uh, both the lightness tones and the color tones because our cameras are not great at capturing those the way that the human eye sees them. They have, there's this thing called dynamic range and that refers to, you know, the whole range from the darkest tones to the lightest tones. So if any of you have ever tried to photograph a sunset, you'll know exactly what I mean because you'll look at the sunset with your eyes and think, is this a beautiful sunset? It's beautiful and glowy. And then the landscape looks really beautiful. And then you take a photo and either the sky is completely blown out in white or the landscape is totally dark and it's just, you know, the colors. It's because your camera can't capture both of those things at once. And the same goes for product photography. It's the same idea. And it's the same reason why photographing on white backgrounds can sometimes be so difficult because our cameras just aren't capable of capturing such a wide range of tones. And it doesn't matter if your camera is like a $6,000 professional camera or your smartphone, they're all in the same boat. So just they're limited. So the editing process will help us achieve the look that like a realistic look, a look that we want uh, for how we want it and how it looks like in real life. So we're able to do that in our editing process. Plus back in the day of film, when you sent your negatives away to be developed, the development process in the dark room, that was the editing process. They did things like they dodged and burned and, you know, changed the colors if they needed to. And then they sent it back to you and that they went through the editing process. So now that we're in digital days, our cameras still aren't that great at knowing exactly what the scene was supposed to look like. So we go ahead and we edit them to make it look the way it's supposed to. It doesn't have to be a long editing process. And I certainly encourage people to try to get it as true to real life as possible in camera, just to save yourself time. But you do have to edit that, that uh, photo afterwards, for sure. Um, so that's one thing. The second thing that I see happen a lot of the time is people over editing their photos. So I will see things like photos that are, are, sorry, product like colors that are too saturated. I see way too much contrast, like the brights are way too bright and the darks are way too dark. And sometimes I see people with putting the vignette around the outside. That's another <laughs> one I want people to avoid, the vignette. Uh, and that's when it's either dark all around the edges or white all around the edges. That's a new one that I've seen coming up lately. So there should be no difference in tone on the edge of your photo throughout the whole photo. It, it used to be back in like the early 2000s, a very kind of like hip portrait style like <laughs> for a moment. Um, but since then, I think we're all in agreement that they should, it shouldn't just shouldn't be around unless <laughs> very definitely not product photography for sure. Certain instances in some fine art, you know, maybe, but not product photography for sure. So avoid using that. Also, this is kind of like an amendment or not an amendment, but an add on to that is I don't want to see anyone using filters. And the reason why like if you either Instagram filters, I know some people are using VSCO and things like that. And they're fun and they're great for like photos of yourself or your friends or your kids or your dog. But when it comes to products, those filters almost always contain color altering steps. So they'll make it look a little bit cool and grunge or they'll make it look a little bit warm and vintage. And that's fun, but it impacts the colors of your product. And we all know how important it is that your colors be as accurate as possible because you know it's very easy especially with some of these colors like purples and turquoises it's so easy for them to go the wrong way either look blue or, blue or whatever and you'll end up with some very unhappy customers if they think they're getting one color and it shows up a different color um so avoid the use of those filters all the time that's just oh i have one more mistake for the editing that i wanted to mention before we move on in this one uh, this one might be a bit of a curveball for people. I'm just loud. I'm here. I'm just upsetting everything. <laughs> but what I want people to know that is really, really important when it comes to product photography and editing is you need to be using an editing program that embeds a color profile. So basically I'll do a real quick explanation of what that means to embed a color profile. So if you have ever uploaded a photo to Etsy or to your website or to Pinterest or wherever, and the colors of your photo look weird, like they maybe look a little desaturated or they look kind of off and they look fine on your computer, but then you upload them and they look all messed up. It's because you don't have a color profile embedded. So what a color profile is, is 
um, just the short, the easy way to explain it is it's like a post-it note. <laughs> so you edited your, you know, your photo or whatever, and the colors look great. And then there's this like color embed post-it note that gets stuck on your image and travels around the internet so that when you upload it to Etsy, let's just say, and Etsy's going to read the post-it note and be like, cool, I know exactly how to render these colors. Bam, the photo's up and it's great. If you don't have that little post-it note, Etsy's going to be like, oh, this is awkward. Um, so I think I'll just like, maybe make it look like this. And then it doesn't <laughs> always look great. Now, sometimes you might get lucky and it'll look fine, but it's really, really tricky, especially when it comes to those subtle color, you know, differences that are so important to capture. So you need to make sure that whatever program you're using, it does embed a color profile. So I'll real quick do a list of ones that I know do and yes. don't in case some of you are wondering. So um, Lightroom, does so that includes Lightroom mobile on your phone it includes Lightroom on your computer um, obviously Adobe Photoshop does uh, same with uh, Photoshop elements there's a program called affinity photo it does embed a color profile uh, Snapseed does embed a color profile I didn't used to but that just changed I think like a couple summers ago so it was exciting um, ones that don't embed a color profile are things like iPicky Pixlr PicMonkey and some of those kind of like free ones that you find that are web-based. A lot of those do not embed a color profile. So it'll actually, if it if your photo had a color profile, it'll actually like strip the color profile when you go to save Ooh. it from that program. So yeah, be very cautious about using those. Here's the other thing that I see a lot that is problematic when it comes to product photos. And that is including text or watermarks in your photo. You should not include either. So there are times when I am okay with you including text in your photos. For example, let's say you have 10 listing photos and maybe a couple at the end might list, you know, you might show different variations of colors and then you'll have little text that lists what they are. And maybe you, I don't know, want to share one that has like a different clasp or something and you can kind of identify what those are. And that's okay to have further down your listing. So you don't want those within the first few photos and you definitely don't want it as your main photo. So careful for that one no text and i do not recommend watermarking your photo i know that this can be a very kind of scary thing for people to hear and think about because there is a lot of image theft there is a lot of people trying to rip off makers who are working really hard but the problem with watermarks is that first of all if you include a watermark you're really limiting the places where you will be able to be featured because no one is going to feature an image with a with a watermark in it so Etsy won't feature you, uh, you know, like influencers won't, whether on Instagram, bloggers won't, that kind of thing. So that really makes people hesitant to share your stuff, which can mean huge breakthroughs for your business if you do have the opportunity to be featured in that way. Also, just in general, they don't look very professional. They distract from your product and they just take away from the overall experience of people trying to experience your products and make a decision whether or not to buy. If somebody does steal your photo, whether there's a watermark or not, they can get rid of it or they'll just use it anyway. I mean, these right. people are bold. Like they don't care yes. if there's a watermark on it at all. Um, and you have to keep in mind that the asset in your business is not your product photos. They're important. They market your stuff. You absolutely have to have great ones. But if someone steals your photos, they haven't stolen you. They haven't stolen your customer service. That They haven't stolen you know, your ability to fulfill orders quickly or all of the other things that make you great. They can't replicate your product in the same way that you do. So you got to just focus on serving your people, taking care of your customers, doing a great job yourself and not get too caught up in worrying about all of these other terrible things <laughs> that I know do happen and it sucks and it's awful and you should send out some letters angrily worded and all of that good stuff, but don't want to break your photos. And Amy, actually you have a webinar. So there are a few things happening, right? You, you are launching your signature course soon and you have a webinar that's starting tomorrow, right? Can you give us more details on what's happening, how people can follow through and, and learn more from you in the coming weeks? For sure. Okay, so first of all, my free masterclass is happening tomorrow. And it is basically the fast track to frustration free product photos. That's the title of it. And that is the backbone of it. It's showing everyone just how simple product photography really can be and putting in place some strategies to make it go as smoothly and as seamlessly and as, you know, 
less frustrating as humanly possible. So that is the objective of the masterclass tomorrow. Uh, I will be doing, I will be identifying kind of like what we talked about today, some of the mistakes that I see a lot, but I'm going to be showing a lot of visuals in terms of what that mistake looks like and what it looks like corrected. And there'll be a lot of fun uh, examples because I know how visual I'm visual. I know you guys are visual. You need to like see the stuff to really get hit home. And we'll also be giving everyone like a very simple framework for, um, you know, how to learn product photography quickly and easily. Uh, and last but not least, I'll be giving everyone some uh, strategies for planning for your photo shoots ahead of time to make sure that they go off without a hitch. And I have a free downloadable photo shoot planner that um, people will get at the end. So that'll be fun too. I love a good planner. I love a good printable, like with the vision and you can write it all down. I'm all over that life. So I'll be including that as well. So that's tomorrow and it's totally free. And you can find all the details on that at amytakespictures.com slash free masterclass. Okay, let me grab the link for everyone. Sure. And let's put it on the video here. Cool. Ooh. And that, um, uh, there's two time slots for that tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern and then uh, Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern. So hopefully one of those times will work. There will be a, a replay available for a limited time if you can't make it live, but obviously that you'll get way more out of it if you do show up live. So I really encourage people to uh, to join me live for that for sure. Uh, and that is the kickoff for my Snap Cell Succeed course being open to new students, which only happens like twice a year. Uh, so it's a very special opportunity to get in there, learn how to take amazing photos in like 60 days, get it out of your system, get it done, have a great, strategy for taking gorgeous photos so that you can kind of like move on to just totally blowing up your business in the best way possible. We, we work through it together. So no, one, no man left behind when it comes to the product photos. It's really important to me that um, all of my students achieve the success that they want. So there's a lot of support for sure. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, I hope that you guys um, who are joining us live or watching the replay that you are able to make it to Amy's free masterclass tomorrow or the day after. And if you can't make it, just sign up anyway so you can get the replay. Yes. Um, I do really think product photos are so, so important. I mean, I think first thing is you have a good product, but if you can't represent that in the best way online, then no one's going to buy from you, right? So. I think now it's a good time to start focusing and investing and thinking about how you can level up your product photos. And like I was saying in the beginning, you you can't learn how to take good product photos from just any photographer. You got to learn it from someone who is experienced as a product photographer. And that is what Amy does. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, sign up. The link is right there in the, the video. And thanks for joining us. If you have any questions, you know, you have Amy's website here. You can chat with her on her website or join her Facebook group so you can follow up with her directly. Okay. Yeah. Thank you guys for Thank watching. Thank you so much. It was so much fun. Yes. Yay. Here's to better product photos this year.